Ladies and gentlemen, Season 4 is up and running and Restoration Shaman remains one of the viable specs in that content as it's quite good into healing, especially bugs. And for good or bad, not much has changed since Season 3, so this is pretty much copy and paste from the guide that I did back then, with the exception of the tier set, which changed in Season 4. So without further ado, let's drive straight in into some of the skills that you'll be using in the dungeons. The buttons that you'll be pressing most for the so-called maintenance healing, when there is damage going on but you do not need to use cooldowns, well, one of the most efficient spells in the game continues to be the Riptide. It synergizes quite well with the rest of your toolkit and yes, it did lose a little bit of value because the alt tier set would buff the healing of that spell significantly. But even without it, it does a lot of healing, it's still quite good and one of your main goals remains to spread as many Riptides as possible to your party members. Apart from spreading Riptides, you also be casting a lot of healing rains and you want to maintain as high uptime as you can on the spell. The healing portion of it is not that important, but two talents that it brings are actually quite important. Acid Rain is going to do a lot of passive damage throughout the dungeon, especially if pulling trash packs with a lot of mobs inside of them, and the Luge is going to buff your healing surge and healing wave and chain heals as long as you cast them on targets that are standing inside of the healing rain. And speaking of that, Healing Surge and Healing Wave are your single target healing spells that got huge boost and huge buffs in Season 3. So every time you want to do some spot healing, you want to use one of the two. Keep in mind that Healing Wave is slower but more mana effective, while Healing Surge is much faster but it wastes a little bit more mana. However, they both benefit from two talents that you're running, Tidal Waves and Ondulation. Tidal Waves is going to reduce the cast time of your next healing wave as long as you cast it Riptide before or it's going to increase the critical strike chance of your healing surges. Undulation makes it so that every third healing wave or healing surge that you cast heals for 50% more. So basically you want to be spamming these two as much as you can with some Riptides in between. If you can afford it and you have the mana definitely use the healing surges but if you're in trouble you can fall back to the healing waves. And last but not least, if you need to heal multiple people, then you're gonna use Chain Heal. Let me note here, if you've been following the PTR, Chain Heal got nerfed a lot, up to the point where it was completely unusable. However, just before the release, it got some buffs back, so now it's actually quite viable again, with the only minus being that it costs a lot of mana, so you have to play a little bit smarter and not just pump Chain Heals as we could do in Season 2, but instead mix it with some of the other spells that we saw previously. In any case, we're still going to be running a lot of talents that complement the Chain Heal, Ancestral Reach increases the healing of the Chain Heal and it makes it jump additional time, Tidebringer and Tidal Waves reduce the cast time of your next Chain Heal and after you spend some amount of mana, your next two Chain Heals are empowered by High Tide. So, to summarize, your maintenance healing and main skills will be maintain healing rain down as much as you can, spread riptides and then spot heal with healing surges or healing waves. If things go bad, you fall behind and there's AoE going on, you can throw in some chain heals as well to catch up. So those were your main skills but this is not going to be your complete main rotation because you have few cooldowns which are so short that you can basically use them all the time. Let's start with Primordial Wave. This one applies additional Riptide to your target and then your next healing wave cleaves everybody that has Riptide on them. You can take few additional talents to increase the effectiveness of the healing wave and reduce the cooldown down to 30 seconds. And since you're already spreading Riptides to everybody in your party, this actually becomes quite effective AoE heal once you pop it up. However, Timing and setup here is everything. If you don't have Riptide rolling, then this skill is useless because you will not get much benefits from it. So basically you need to know when the damage is coming, you already need to have the Riptide spread on your party and then you press that button, you press the healing wave and everybody is topped up. The short cooldown will allow you to use this skill multiple times during boss fights so as long as you use it smartly you can get a lot of value out of the skill. Pretty much the same is true for the Cloud Burst Totem. Once you press that button for the next 15 seconds it stores healing from your healing spells and then it bursts and heals everybody for the stored amount. This one also requires you to play quite smart because timing again is everything 
and keep in mind that once you press that button at a later stage you can press it a second time and this is going to automatically trigger the cloud burst instead of you waiting for the full 15 seconds. Quick note here, this requires a little more skill to play with and you need to get used to and get a feel for when to use it, when to press it, when to pop it. If that sounds too complicated for you and especially if you're just starting up with Restoration Shaman, you can choose Healing Stream Totem instead, which is on the same note as the Cloudburst Totem. It is much easier to use because when you pop it, it just starts passively healing your party members, but of course you have much less control over it. It's great for lower keys and while you're still learning, but at later stages you basically have to learn and start utilizing the Cloudburst. The Cloudburst Totem itself has a lot of talents that synergizes with it, Swirling Currents increases the total healing that it does, you also get talents to increase its duration and reduce its cooldown, and you can even get a talent called Totemic Recall which is going to reset the cooldown of the most recently used Totem, meaning Cloudburst. So long story short, the better you want to be with Restoration Shaman, the more it comes down to timing your Cloudburst and timing and setting up your Primordial Waves. Another button that you'll be pressing all the time is Earth Shield. This one will heal the target every time they take damage. And since we'll be running the Elemental Orbit talent that you're going to see later on, it will allow us to cast the Earth Shield on a friendly target and on ourselves as well. Generally it does a lot of passive healing, but because of the Earth and Harmony talent, in which you can put 2 points, it will also reduce the damage that the target takes by 6%. So for that reason alone, you want to keep this up on all times on yourself and usually on the tank or another target that you know will be taking damage and you want to mitigate part of it. On top of that, the elemental orbit talent that I mentioned earlier is going to allow you to cast two shields on yourself. One of them is going to be the earth shield and the second one is going to be water shield which restores mana to you and it will give you even more mana back every time one of your direct healing spells crits due to the resurgence talent. All of that is quite important due to the mana nerfs that we got coming into Season 3. So to summarize, your playstyle is going to look like this. Keep 2 earth shields on yourself and another target plus water shield on yourself. Keep casting the main skills that we saw in the previous section. Feeding the healing from them into the cloud burst then you can pop manually if you'd want or just let them expire. And then set up primordial wave cleaves for every healing on targets with your reptides on them. Alright, next on the menu are the big cooldowns that you have at your disposal for when things go south really bad. Nature Swiftness is something that could go into the small cooldowns as well because you should be using it all the time. It's a 1 minute cooldown that makes your next cast instant and it also reduces the mana cost. It's a great skill to use to cast something on the move and if you don't have anything to use it on, you can always use it in combination with your healing rain. Next up, on another relatively short cooldown of 2 minutes you have Ancestral Guidance. This one increases your healing based on the healing or damage that you're gonna be doing in the next 10 seconds. So you can either use it to boost your healing simply by doing more based on that percentage or you can combine it with a skill like Stormkeeper. This is actually a DPS skill that makes your next 2 chain lightnings instant cast and doing more damage. But in fact, if you pop this along with Ancestral Guidance on a trash pack, you are guaranteed to top your party off just by doing the damage from the Chain Lightnings. Healing Tide Totem is another AoE spell that basically heals everybody in your party for 10 seconds. It's a 3 minute cooldown, but it's great when you have to deal with rotting and constant AoE damage going on. And then we have the big boys. Ascendance transforms you for 15 seconds, duplicating at 80% effectiveness of your healing spells and doing some initial healing as well. It did get some nerfs recently and it is a 3 minute cooldown, but this one can basically get you through anything as long as you have it available. Very important note to make here, the extra healing from Ascendance radiates from the Shaman, so your positioning here is vital and the same stands true for the Cloudburst Totem. I would recommend to try and position yourself between the melee and the range so when you pop one of those two skills you are hitting everybody in your party. And last but not least we have the spirit link totem which does not do any healing that's very important to understand but it does bring damage reduction and everybody standing inside of it is basically immortal. It does come at the price of a 3 minute cooldown, it is not effective if you're the only one standing inside. And you definitely need to combine it with some extra healing to keep everybody inside alive once you pop it. 
but it could be a very powerful cooldown if used correctly. And now to summarize the major cooldown section, you want to use nature swiftness as often as possible and then I usually want to start and use ancestral guidance first, especially on the longer boss fights because it's a 2 minute cooldown and it could basically come back and you can use it twice during the encounter. Which is not always true for the longer 3 minute cooldowns. Then ascendance as I said can get you basically through everything. And you also have healing Thai totem which is more situational when everybody in your party is taking ticking damage and the spirit link totem which could be very powerful if used correctly during huge AoE burst and your party of course stacking on top of each other. The new addition in season 4 is the new tier set bonus which is the same as the one that we got in season 1. We did completely ignore the tier set bonus for season 3 in Mythic Plus and this one is a little bit more interactive. You get 15% increased critical strike chance as long as you have a cloud burst or healing stream totem down and your healing critical strikes are a little bit more effective than the usual ones with 20% increased value. That means that you want to keep your cloud burst and healing stream totems down as much as possible even if you're DPSing as the increased value from the crit strike is not only going to heal for more but it's also going to bring you back more mana because of the resurgence talent. That also brings up the value of the totemic recall talent because it's going to bring up the uptime of your cloud burst and healing stream totems and although it's not necessary to run it you can consider it as it's going to help a lot. Overall this tier set is probably better than the previous one, yes you do lose the healing bonus for the riptides but the old tidal reservoir didn't do much healing in M+, so you should be getting more value from the increased critical strike chance and the increased effectiveness of your crit strikes. Regardless of whether you choose Cloud Burst Totem or Healing Stream, just keep them down as much as you can and simply enjoy the bonuses. A part of the healing, as a shaman you're actually bringing a lot to the M plus dungeons in the form of utility, of course you have the Bloodlust, which is now a must have for every Mythic Plus dungeon. And you have Wind Shear, which is a range interrupt, which is also one of the shortest interrupts in the game, so make sure you make a good use of it during the runs. Speaking of interrupts, you have Capacitator Totem and Thundershock, which you can use to either stun or knock up a group of enemies, which is very important in big trash pools when you need to AoE CC the mobs. And then you have several skills that help you dispel, so you have the Purge, which can be used to remove effects from the enemies, but you can also dispel curses, and you have the Poison Cleansing Totem, which is particularly useful during weeks with the Afflicted Affix, as dropping down the totem dispels both of the Afflicted Adds once they spawn. You have Hex to deal with the Incorporeal Affix and a whole bunch of movement enhancement abilities as the Windrush Totem and Gust of Wind. In the Defense Department, you have Astro Shift, which reduces your damage taken for a whole 12 seconds, which is not bad at all. And Spirit Walker's Grace allows you to cast while moving for 15 seconds which is very useful based on some of the profile of the dungeons in Season 3 where there's a lot of movement evolved in some of the boss fights. You can reduce the cooldown of these spells and get some extra healing from Nature's Guardian, increased health from Brimming with Life and the Earth Elemental which could be used to salvage some very bad situations and increases your health in the process. As far as stats go, you always want to prior your main stat, intellect, item level, whatever you want to call it, and then your next most important stat is the critical strike. It not only allows you to heal and crit for more, but it also gives you some mana back based on the resurgence talent, which is quite nice. Versatility is next on the list as we scale pretty nice with that stat, increasing the damage and the healing that we do, and for higher keys it also gives you some damage reduction. Haste is not a necessity but getting some of it is good first for DPS and second as we'll be casting more healing waves this tier it will make them go faster and this stat could in fact be very useful in raid so if you find items with high haste definitely keep them for the sake of raiding. Master is the least useful one in M+, just because it heals for more as long as your targets have low health. But this is not something that we want to see in M+, we try to keep everybody topped up so you do not get much benefit of having more mastery. At the end let me also show you a build that covers everything we've talked about so far. You can copy and paste this from the description of this video and let me very quickly point your attention to some talents that you can actually change for others if you don't like them or if you need them for let's say certain weeks or certain affixes. 
Iron to Talent points in Torrent, which further buffs your Riptides. This is going to be more valuable, especially once you get the 4-piece tier set bonus. But you can totally play without them as well and invest those two points in different places. You can free up one more point by removing the Lava Surge talent, which is a pure DPS one. If you're not interested in DPS and you only want healing throughput, then definitely don't use this one. And instead, you can take Wave Speaker's Blessing, which increases the duration of your Riptides. Or you can take Mana Tide if you're struggling with mana and you have mana issues. Even Earth Living Weapon is an option as it gives you some extra healing, although that replaces the regular weapon and chance and buffs that you'll be using otherwise. And for higher keys, you can take Ancestral Vigor, which gives more health to your targets, which could make the difference between living and dying some mechanics, but I wouldn't recommend this talent for lower keys as it's not that relevant there. On the other side of the tree, you often need to switch some points based on the affixes and the weeks and the dungeons that you're dealing with. And the easiest thing to do is to remove one or two points from Elemental Warding. You can then invest these points into Improved Purify Spirit to remove curses for Afflicted or Waycrest Manor, or to the Poison Cleansing Totem if you're dealing with Afflicted, for example. You can also get Hex for Incorporeal or Thunderous Paws for Entangling. And if you fancy it, you can also get Totemic Rico, which allows you to reset the cooldown of the Cloudburst Totem and get even more out of these. Let me also mention that there are alternative talent builds that you can build around more Primordial Waves and Riptide alone without the chain heals. You can see some footage of that gameplay on my channel as I upload some of my runs with those talents up there. However, I think that this build is going to be superior this season and I'll also make separate videos for the alternative talents which are more niche situations and different gameplay style. To make all of these complete, let's mention the embellishments that you'll be using this season Probably the best option is on your wrists and then on your feet. Both the Adaptive Dracotist Arm Guards and the Venom Steeps Stompers give you lots of secondary stats, which is very good. I guess the only other option to consider is the Elemental Lariat on the neck, but this one is good once you have a lot of sockets on your gear, so probably later in the season. One last question that I get a lot is, what consumables should you be using in N+. When it comes to Fios, the Corrupting Rage is definitely your best option because it gives you a lot of critical strike, which as discussed previously is great for shamans, but if you don't like the damage from it or it's too expensive, there's a cheaper version which is the Tepid Versatility, which is our second best add and it also gives you some DR for the higher level keys. If you're not using Earth Living Weapon, then you can use Buzzing Rune for your weapon, which gives you more critical strike, always good. And keep in mind that in this patch there is a new healing potion which is obviously better than the previous ones, so you might want to stock some of these as well. When it comes to food, feast is always the best, but if you don't have a feast, you can buy on the auction house deviously the Vialt Axe, which also give you primary stat, and they're not that expensive. If you're lacking these options for whatever reason, you can also get crit food as well. And I would also recommend to get some delicious dragon spitter which restores mana in between pools when you start drinking and this one is better than the water that you get from the vendors in the inns. Of course that's not a prerequisite, you can run with the inn water as well, just make sure you have some so you can restore some mana when you need to. And that will be all for the updated Restoration Shaman Guide for Season 4. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments below. I'll see you in the next video. Now get out of here.